All right, so basically, Impact Day isn't ready for early access. We had the first alpha was like in November, and then this is May. So November, December, January, February, March, April, May. No, it's the end of April. I'm sorry, beginning of May. Whatever. Six months, and in six months from the first alpha, stack sizes in crafting didn't change. The building is essentially the same as it was in Alpha 1. The combat, the only thing that they added to combat was a targeting thing. They added some special moves to some of these weapons. So like this added jab and then the shield adds shield bash where you can do some fancy stuff and then jabs and that's pretty dumb. And then your instant cast stun, which is uh, going to be just a static thing in PvP. Everyone's going to have a shield, everyone's going to wear maces, and uh, everyone is going to try and stun lock everybody else to try and win these PvP battles. PvP combat is just bad. It is not ready. And um, people going into the PvP zones should really just go there for farming materials because fighting is just cookie, cl cookie clicker. Um, all you do is you go in, you have your shield, and you have your stuff, and you shield bash the guy, and then you poke him with whatever weapon you have until they get out of their stun and then stun you, and you just sit there until they do the same thing, and then you're hitting each other until your cooldowns go go uh, go away, and then you can stun lock them again and then attack. That is PvP combat. Whoever has the most... Whoever has the best food, whoever has the better gear, is basically going to win. So you could get a brand new player into the game, give them the best food, give them the best gear, and they could beat somebody who has more experience. There might be combat tricks and that sort of thing, but essentially they're going to win. Uh, as long as whoever has the faster click button finger and whoever has the best food is going to win. So PvP combat in general is bad. Um, I spent not as much time cooking as you would think. My uh, cooking skill is at 25. Wood, uh, wood cutting and mining don't matter, but the reason cooking is so high is because it had a very spammable recipe. Um, where are you at? Syrups. All of the syrups just require one berry and one water at every at every ring. So cooking was unreasonably easy to level. So this needs to change at the very least. Um, gathering the grapes, gathering the fruit um, is too easy. So, I mean, except for blueberries. Blueberries are very difficult to find, which was pretty nice. But I mean, those were the second berry that you had to try and find. Uh, anyway, um, so for cooking, uh, leveling these syrups do need to change. So maybe one water, and that because water is so easy to get, and then maybe five or ten berries. You know, um, it needs to slow down. It needs to have a harder entry thing. And that's how easy it is to get water. Not not a big deal at all. But the berries to make the syrup should require more. The let's see here. The charcuterie bench is fun. This is basically just butchery, and I really like this, but what is annoying about this is that in the cooking bench, you have access to sausages. Where are you at? These sausages. And in the cooking bench, you're leveling charcuterie, which, you know, shouldn't be a thing. So, one, not only should it, should it not be a thing, these animal intestines, uh, intestines, this number is too high. Basically, in general, all of the crafting recipes need to be looked at, and the devs need to go in and actually craft and grind some of these things to get a better understanding of how these things feel to grind or to craft. Because the, uh, the intestines, you need four, but these things they stack to 10 and you need four, which means, I mean, in order to make two crafts, I use up one entire um, slot for it and then leave two after. So 
There we go, that's five crafts, right? These should stack higher. In addition, the animal intestines don't actually drop as often as you would think. Now, I did have a, a suggestion and some feedback for specifically butchering and cooking. So the idea is when... Okay, here's what normally happens. You fight your animal and then you pick up the carcass and immediately you get your carcass, your hide, your sinew, your intestines, suet, and wool fiber. Wool fiber should belong to a sheep or a ram um, animal. We should have a completely different animal for wool fiber. Suet, bone, the intestines, the sinew, uh, and the hide. Now, or then the carcass. We also have the carcass here. What should happen because what normally happens is you take this boar carcass to the charcuterie table and you cut it up into its its meat parts, right? The hunter shouldn't get the sinew, the intestines, the suet, or the bone. All they should have is the carcass. Now, the hunter should have a skill. Leatherworking should have a skill called skinning, where right now all I would do is I would activate the boar and then slowly carve it up. And I would only get two items, the carcass and the skin. That's it. My skinning level would go up, and as it got higher, I could skin higher tier animals. Starting with rabbits, going to deer, going to boar, then uh, wolves and bears, and so on. Uh, leatherworking needs skinning. Skinning needs to happen. Now, in regards to cooking, once I've skinned the animal, I have the skin for the leather worker, and I have the carcass for the butcher. Very simply, I would take the leather to the leather worker, and then I would take the carcass to the butcher. Now, the butcher could use these, this charcuterie, right? The magic. Let me get rid of this. And they then they butcher the carcass. When they butcher the carcass, that is when you the butcher will get the sinew, the intestines, the suet, and the bone. All of the animal parts that come from a carcass, right? So not only will they get their meat parts, but they'll get all of the internal stuff that other crafts will use and need. Um, this will help lev level up charcuterie. It'll ease up the inventory problems that hunters are going to have when they're hunting um, animals and having room for gathering berries and herbs and other things that, that uh, other people will need instead of really just throwing a lot of stuff away just to... In my case, I was throwing a lot of the other stuff away to gather the, the skins. Um, but as I was running, it would have been nice to gather, you know, more berries or more herbs and things like that. Maybe if I came across rye for baking, um, you know, having that space. So um, skinning needs to be a, a harvesting skill and it needs to be used on animals in the field to give the hunter one skin and one carcass. The carcass comes to the charcuterie guy when we cut it up and we do this. Now, that's how I think the carcass and these extra pieces should work. So one of the problems that we end up with is the ratio of meats. Some of these items only require rough meat chunks, but you only get one rough meat chunk from one carcass. And then you get two extra pieces of meat that you can't even use for any other recipes. Maybe you could use them in the stews, but those require rough meat chunks also. The requirement for rough meat chunks in all of the recipes is a problem compared to how many you get per carcass. So either the rough meat chunks needs to be limited to low level recipes and the charcuterie, the uh, cutting of the carcasses, any of these rough cut um, animals should only spit out rough meat chunks and then your selection will turn into you cut the selections of meat and that makes more sense to me now the cooking okay so the roasting spit and you don't even have to cook any of these things you can just put the same ingredients into the roasting spit and that's a problem yes you have access to higher level recipes um, and then they cook automatically for you. So like the farmhouse roast, let's see. The farmhouse roast is a 27 thing that I can't cook right now. However, 
in this, I can just plop it into plop the ingredients into the roasting spit to have it spit it out in 20 minutes. Now, this shouldn't exist. This shouldn't be how this is done. What we can do, what will make more sense, is that in the charcuterie table and not the cooking table, we would create the links using the ingredients. These, it needs to be one intestine. That's a different problem, but these, you make the links. Then you carry the raw links to be cooked over a period of time in the roasting spit. You just put them in there, let them sit for like 20 minutes or whatever, and then let them be done. 10 minutes. Let the raw links come in and be cooked in 10 minutes. Um, put them in in stacks of five, and you know, you can safely just crank out food. Maybe longer, considering uh, the rate at which food is eaten, but who knows. Uh, actually, five per 20 minutes probably sounds right, since one food lasts about 30. Now, that same thing should work for baking. Now, here is the problem with baking. Let's start with the level one rye dough. We need rye flour and yeast. In order to make those, we have to have... Uh, where is it? Right here. Well, we'll just do this. In order to make rye flour, you have to grind out 20 rye grain, and that takes one hour. Now, that's just for a stack of 20. In order to make yeast, you need 20 rye flour and 20 water, and it needs to sit for another hour. So far, that's two hours of waiting for a level for the beginner recipe. But because the yeast requires 20 flour, you actually need two stacks of rye flour, which means you either need two millstones to help, you know, uh, flesh that out, which many people will be forced to do. Or you wait two hours to get your two stacks of rye flour. So that's two hours of waiting. We're pretending we're just using one stone. Now, you take your yeast and your flour and you mix it up on the countertop. Now this makes sense because you put in your flour, you put in your water, you mix it together and you get your dough. Then you take that dough over to the baking oven and what do we have to do? You put the dough in, but it asks for a stack of 10, and it asks for 10 lard in addition. Now, the, the baking oven, if you've ever baked anything in your life, you know that all you do is you plop the dough into the oven and you let it cook. There is no reason that this should have an active, um, an active component. We shouldn't hit craft and then they sit there and they use their hands to bake bread. That's not how this should work. Also, the lard should be moved into the, the dough process. It should be part of this recipe. Add one lard to this. Now, the other problem is the quantity on the baking. It is absolutely unreasonable to ask for 10 rye dough and 10 lard for 10 rye bread. This is, um, by itself, two hours of work just for the rye dough. You need the rye uh, flour and then the rye and then the yeast. That's two hours of wait time. Then for 10 lard, you need to go out and farm suet from animals. And the problem with the suet is that each one lard takes two suet. Lard isn't, or suet isn't a guaranteed drop from boars. It's random. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. And the fact that you need so much in some of these recipes, and additionally, it's shared between two um, items, lard and tallow, which are used in multiple different uh, recipes, including um, blacksmithing for like lanterns and candles and things like that. Suet is far too rare. Suet is far too rare to be to have that high of a uh, or that bad of a conversion rate. The suet should have um, one suet should turn into multiple lard, maybe three to be fair, especially considering how rare it drops. If it was one to one, when if we 
if it was one to one, if we used my idea to, uh, for the butcher to pull parts, then it probably wouldn't be so bad, but it's not. So it's bad. Then as, as you put your lard, your water, your, uh, dough and your yeast together to make dough in the cooking bench, then like the spit roast, all you should have to do is plop it into the oven and wait for the dough to cook. There's no reason for, for baking for the oven. There's no reason for the oven to have a active, um, an active component. And then baking ma makes sense in the cooking thing as you get better at making the different doughs. But what shouldn't happen here in the cooking bench uh, is charcuterie. Um, the simple roast should be done in the charcuterie table. It should be raw and then thrown onto the spit roast or put into the cooking hearth. I think, I think by the, the easiest way to do this is to have all of the prepared ingredients off of the cooking bench and then the cooking hearth, the spit roast, and the baking oven all act as you put it in and you wait for the item to cook. That's how sh these should do. This should just be a big furnace, the same way we do we mess with uh, iron and all of the metals. Um, stews, yeah, because the main part of the stew, main part of cooking stew is putting it together on the cooking table. Now, the other issue that we have here, uh, actually, uh, the other issue that I have here is this. Oops, not the herb infusion. Where are you at? Fennel tea. It's listed as herbalism, which is a completely new and different skill. And I mean, you're essentially boiling herbs and water to get a liquid out of it, which sounds exactly like alchemy. Tea should be in the alchemy bench, and it should be one of the ways that we level up alchemy. Because in the alpha, finding these Loyos, uh, Loyos tiers was an absolute nightmare. All across the Discord, there were constant questions about where to find this, and nobody could get a straight answer. It was like, oh, it's in this biome or that biome, but nobody had any visual component to help people find it. So uh, herbalism should be moved over here um, to help leveling alchemy and be part of that, uh, that chain of stuff. So, um, and then here's winemaking and brewing, which is yet another thing, which we should, we could also put into the alchemy table since we're dealing with liquids and brewing and all of that stuff, because you're using the same, uh, I guess you're not using the same things, but you might be, I'm not sure. I didn't get too far into that, but yeah, winemaking, liquid making, tea making, all of this should be part of the alchemy table because they essentially uh they function the same and that's how that should be so i kind of went on a rant when i got when i got to cooking um but that's really just an example of how difficult crafting is right now well this isn't a good example how how not ready um pax day is and using cooking as an example it's very unorganized there's um, there's some number tweaks that need to happen. There are loot table changes that need to change um, the numbers of items. The conversion rate of those items need to be adjusted. And most importantly, I think a lot of people agree that the stack sizes for a lot of these items need to change because I have so many berries and they take up quite a bit of space. Um, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't look like this, but especially with recipes. Okay, so if if we uh, use if we did have the number change and it required five or ten berries to uh, make a syrup, I would either have ten or five crafting attempts, and I'd only have so let's let's say uh, at most five, right? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Um, I think I'm confused. I think I confused myself. Ten because I wanted to go five berries per, so 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 44, right? 44 attempts to craft this syrup, and that takes up five slots in the chest, which is pretty unreasonable. A stack, letting these stack to 100, because they've already done that, 
Um, eh, right here. Grain stacks to 100. And they should do this with all herbs. Any plant life, all of those should stack to 100. Because all of these plants stack to 20. They only stack to 20. And the reagent table requires 25 of the plants. Which means you need... Which, which means it's more than one stack per craft, which is pretty unreasonable. But once again, these numbers need to change. Um, right now, Pax Day. Right now, Pax Day is just an unfinished crafting and building sim. It's an unfinished Valheim. And I'm stuck. It's an unfinished Valheim. And that's, that's not really a good thing. Yes, the game is beautiful. Yes, you can make some pretty crazy builds, you know? But once you're done, that's it. You can grind crafting, but a lot of people are going to get burnt out and they're going to get annoyed with how that system is. And and that makes this game not ready for early access. There is no way, there's no way that they could have this ready in six months. But There's no way they could have this ready for early access in six months. If they do that, if they try to release this into early access and ask players for money, well, it's a one-time one purchase and they're not asking for a subscription yet, but no, there are going to be a lot of dead towns after people reach their end game. And I don't see, I don't see how mainframe can, I don't see how they can turn this around. It, it's absolutely not ready. And they shouldn't, they shouldn't, um, they shouldn't try and take this into early access. Not yet. But depending on what we hear from them, uh, uh, from the uh, early access, from their feedback and what changes they want to implement, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see what happens at that point. But right now that's, uh, that's all we got. I really enjoy this game and I really, really want to grind it, but... It's pretty much been confirmed that, um, you know, going into early access, there are going to be wipes. And with a grind this long, with players trying to do as much as they can at any given point, um, having that progress reset is going to feel very bad. And it's going to be interesting to see how many people decide to stick around after their character and their progress get completely wiped because they decide to change some systems. I don't know how that's going to be. Um, but right now, offhand, when this alpha goes, if I don't get into the friends and family uh, test, I'll be playing uh, a lot of Nightingale. Nightingale feels a lot like this in that it's unfinished, but I don't have to wait hours to craft my stuff, which is a different, which is a different argument altogether. Uh, but anyway, that's about it. This was just a really long rant and it turned out into me talking about cooking for most of it. But as a crafting example, all of the crafts are very unfinished. The combat is, uh, is going to be problematic. Uh, nobody could get into the dungeons, but uh, to be fair, it w we were all basically level 15 if we put it into WoW terms trying to get into level 30 or 40 dungeons. People were wiped um, almost immediately and they lost all of their gear and they couldn't reclaim it. But that's that's on them for going into areas that they absolutely shouldn't have gone. There was a PVP test, a stress test today, and uh, I'm not sure how that went. I am not a PVPer, so I am over here building and crafting and doing that sort of stuff. But anyway... Pax Day isn't ready, and it shouldn't go into early access unless, unless, unless Mainframe shows how much they're listening to players and listening to their feedback, so we can see how much, what their plans are to make the game better according to player feedback from these two alphas. And me as a crafter, I'll be per paying particular attention to what they decide to do in regards to stack sizes for items, um, skills, and um, the 
recipe changes if they've adjusted both the uh, material requirements and the experience rewards for various crafts. But it's quite a bit to do, and uh, I'm not sure how they're going to pull it off. Or in a timely manner. I'm not sure how they'll do it in a short period of time. Because if they want to release this into early access in spring, I don't think it's possible. I don't, if it's, I don't think it's a good idea at all. This needs much more time to cook before they attempt to ask money for it, if they want it to be a success. But then Ashes of Creation is coming out, and once that does, it's going to scratch a different itch than uh, PAX Day players are wanting. But in the meantime, like I said, uh, Nightingale, Pal World, Valheim, mm, Seven Days to Die is reaching its 1.0, so there are a lot of survival games that do what PAX Day does, which is just building, survival, crafting, simplicity. PAX Day wants to be an MMO, but their combat, their dungeons, their PvP, and their raid content, so to speak, is non-existent, so we can't exactly call it an MMO yet. Not in the traditional sense, so... Here's hoping, here's hoping that the feedback they take and act on does a lot of good for this game. But that's it. You're welcome.